He was here a second ago. While we're looking for our clerk. If anyone here has a cell phone, we ask that you put it on vibrate or turn it off completely to uh, not disturb the meeting. That's including commissioners. And that's including commissioners. <laughs> Did we have a problem at the work session? Somebody's phone go off. Uh, Mine. Commissioner Brown's phone didn't go off. <laughs> Find him, Randy. Yeah, he's on his way. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. This is the uh, public hearing for the April seventeenth, May two thousand eight. Uh, roll call, Mr. Spears. Yes, sir. Mr. Brown. Mr. Cox. Here. Mr. Dominic. Here. Mr. Epperson. Here. Mr. Escaday. Here. Mr. Jenkins. Present. Mr. Lynn. <coughs> Ms. Lynch. Here. Ms. McCullough. Here. Mr. Pearson. Present. Mr. Smith. Here. Thibodeau. Here. Former Mr. President. Thank you, sir. I'm going to ask Mr. Jenkins to give us our invocation. I'll lead the pledge. Please, everybody, everybody please stand. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for these young people, these students that are present with us today, community leaders who are present with us today, recognition that they will be receiving. Father God, we know that they represent the best that our parish has to offer. Father God, we just ask now for your divine guidance as we deliberate the business of the people of this parish. Help us to make decisions in our best interest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please face the flag and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Sound like a wind blowing in the tree. I know. <laughs> all them windbreakers yeah. out there. I uh, need a motion to adopt the minutes from uh, April 3rd. So moved. Second. So moved by. Who made the motion? Dominic. Mr. Dominic, seconded by Mr. Smith. Any questions? All right, please vote. And that passes. All right. Special resolutions, Mr. Smith. Uh, Resolution of recognition for the Linwood Middle School basketball team. So moved. And moved by. Been moved and seconded. Mr. Spears, yes, sir. please read the resolution. All right, sir. Uh, do you want to have the young men come yes, forward? Yes, would all the commissioners please stand. Are they coming up? I'll come forward. Right, come on. I can comment this is a middle school, not a high school. <laughs> <laughs> This is a resolution of recognition to the Linwood Middle Magnet School Wildcats. Whereas the Caddo Parish Commission desires to give appropriate recognition to those young people of Caddo Parish who by their extraordinary achievements have distinguished themselves in ways that reflect favorably and positively upon this parish. And whereas the Linwood Middle School MST Magnet School Wildcats basketball team, composed of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders from the school, have completed a perfect 23 and 0 season to capture the titles of Shreveport Boys City Champions and League One Champions, as well as championship of the Round Ball Classic, a tournament of teams from other areas of the state. And whereas the players, under the steady leadership of head coach uh, and um, names uh, and assistant coach Larry Smith, the Wildcats played a controlled, disciplined style of basketball, combining a stingy defense with an offense that consistently produced on the inside as well as the outside. And whereas, not surprisingly, the team produced three city all-stars, Joshua Robinson, Joe Robinson, and Tracy Edwards, as well as the city most valuable player, Joshua Robinson. Rounding out the starting five were Trenton Hall and Brandon Brown, while the bench consisted of Avion Brown, Steve Coleman, Timothy Gaines, Buford Johnston, Christopher Mills, Doriente Moses, 
Ronte Miles, Joshua Player, and Ronnie Prelo. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cattle Parish Commission, it does hereby heartily commend and congratulate the Linwood Middle School mm -hmm. Magnet Wildcats for their success and for the pride and honor they have brought to their families, their school, their community, and their parish. Uh, be it further resolved, the commission does wish for those young men much continued success and that they will continue to dream, to aspire, to strive, and to achieve, and to excel as they face the challenges and opportunities their lives will present. Coach, if you'll step forward, I'd oh. like to give you a round of hands. Coach, you can Coach. say a few Coach. words there, son. We ain't going to let you go that hood, far. Huh? <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for uh, recognizing these young men. Uh, they have been very successful this year, and I am proud of them. And we're proud to be the champions of Shreveport. And uh, I, I'm, I'm real proud that God put me in a place to watch these young men grow. And hopefully, that, as, as recognizing these young men today, they'll keep on doing what they're doing and going in the right direction. So we thank y'all, and we want to give it up for y'all, too. Oh, wow. And I know our pre principal is not here, but uh, Ms. Jen Ms. Monica Jenkins Moore. So we are we are very honored today. Thank you very much. Right. I'm Joyce Rogers, and on behalf of our principal, Monica Jenkins Moore, we certainly want to thank you all for taking for bestowing this uh, resolution upon us. We do have a lot of things we are proud of. Our boys have a great achievement in going to 23 and 0 season. Once again, we thank you, and we really want to encourage our young people uh -huh. to do the very best they can do. Always the positive. Thank you so very much. Amen. <laughs> Any comments from the commissioners? I just want to know, um, anybody going to play for the round baller? That's uh, you all plan for? <laughs> <We're recruiting. laughs> I'm recruiting. <Yeah. laughs> we'll may, as well, may as well <laughs> recruit on television if you're gonna recruit. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm fine with little. Bit. <laughs> all right, but um, uh, certainly we are proud of the accomplishments of these young men. I, I see, you know, dealing with AU basketball and still trying to 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 deal with young people. I still. Um, uh, still find a joy in watching them grow and develop and, and the kind of uh, things that we, we try to get them to do as you get a little older um, your coaches and I know if you're a part of the Round Ballers Association going to encourage you to, to take the ACT going to help you pass it and so that, that you'll be able to go out on the college and, and, uh, and, and do well as well it's just not about basketball you know, it's about being a student athlete, and uh, that's that's what's really important. <coughs> and as you go to these tournaments, and I'm sure you guys who play AAU will across the country, you'll see uh, coaches and the big time coaches, Division One all the way down to NAI, looking for student athletes, and and they're looking for guys who can come in and make a contribution. So we're proud of the start that you have, and we're proud that. Uh, your coaches have taken the time to work with you, but believe me, this is just the beginning, and and the world opens up to you. All you have to do is just step right in there. So, congratulations again, and I hope you guys do really well. And if you're interested in the round ballers, let me know. <laughs> All right, we have Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Brown, and Mr. Epperson. Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. President. I too want to uh, congratulate these young men on your accomplishment. For any team at any level to go through an entire season and not lose a game is almost unheard of these days. So you've done something that's very rare. And I also want to share the sentiments that uh, Commissioner Pearson was making. Uh, you have pursued excellence on the basketball court, which is good. But you also have to pursue that same excellence off the bas basketball uh, court. I want to see each of you young men continue not only to be good student athletes, to be a good example in your home, be a good example in your community and in your churches. Because we need young men like you. What you're representing here today 
is very, very important to so many of us. It's very important to all of us that we have good role models, good leaders, and that they start off at a young age. So congratulations on being champions, not only in basketball, but I, I predict and I perceive that you can also be champions in life. Congratulations. Mr. Brown. Hello there. <coughs> and as your commissioner, I'm very proud of all of you. I continue to encourage you, each of you, to continue the good work. And I thank you, all of you, for the great job that y'all have done and continue on. Thank you again. Mr. Epperson. Uh, to Ms. Rogers, first of all, I'd just like to say good to see you again. Mm -hmm. So you still on the battlefield for uh, mm -hmm. making sure that the children within your school uh, excel not only uh, in the sports line but academically. It's also important to mention the fact that Linwood has a math and science program. They open up a brand new wing uh, with a lot of computers and a lot of technology and it's the uh, math and science uh, uh, technology program that's there and I might also add that my son attends Linwood and uh, we are proud of what uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Rogers as well as coach and all the other instructors and Ms. Monica Jenkins Moore are doing academically at that school also and young men as uh, Mr. Pearson and uh, and uh, Mr. Jenkins stated, uh, it should come from the basketball court and spread to the community. Those values that you learn there in sportsmanship, camaraderie, and good attitude should spread within the community. And make sure that you take the same veal and zest that you had on the basketball court into the classroom with you each day. Thank you. I am Cattle Parish Commissioner Rose Wilson McCulloch, who's also a staff member at Lanier Middle School. I um, also served as one of the teachers of several of the players. I attended your game. Let me first of all congratulate Ms. Monica Jenkins Moore, the principal, Ms. Rogers, Billy Wayne, uh, and the coach. Uh, I had an opportunity to actually watch you guys in action. I'm sure you will never forget Aggie Johnson. That's one of my star students. Mm -hmm. that actually played uh, on the courts with you. But uh, I do agree that it's also not so much, it's also important that you be a great role model off of the court um, because each and every one of you, whether you know it or not, you are now a leader. And somebody is watching you. And somebody wants to be just like you. So you're going to have to be extra careful what you say, what you do, where you go. And uh, keep your, God, your hand in God's hand and just know that I was honored, although I was a loser this time. But I do look forward uh, to the next time. Um, and what was so unique about it was Linwood is considered the Wildcats and so is Lanier. We're, so you had two Wildcats on the floor. So that might have caused a little difficulty for the Lanier Wildcats. <laughs> but again, congratulations. Okay. All right, that's all the commissioners. On behalf of all the commissioners, we congratulate each and every one of you, and good luck next year. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, I'll say one thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Parents that are up today, they could please recognize mm -hmm. what it is. All right. I'll just keep it... Uh, it up next year uh, uh my side of town is ridgewood raiders so we'll see you next year maybe we'll <laughs> <laughs> have a good show next year because i think the year before last i think ridgewood won so y'all did good this year so uh, uh keep going in the right direction <laughs> huh threatening to fear you hey i gotta kick i gotta take up from my side of town now you know I, how many's going to southwood <laughs> Southwood needs some good players. There you go. All right. Well, I got one going. All right. Congratulations to everybody, and, and good luck next year. We appreciate you coming out. Uh, next, Mr. Spears. Well, we have another resolution here for your side of town. I think we'll save that, huh, Coach? Yeah, we'll save that and, and probably give it to them in person. Yeah. Okay. Or see if they can come out another day. Uh, next, Mr. Spears. 
All right. That, uh, uh, Commissioner Epperson had asked to be able to make some presentations at this time. All right. Thank you. The chair will turn it over to Mr. Epperson. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> at this time, I would like to record, uh, in conjunction with uh, April being Parish Government Month, I'd, l I'd like to mention that basically Parish Government wouldn't be anything if it were not for the people within the parish, and especially our community groups. Uh, I had asked some to come out today. I didn't really tell them the nature of coming out. I told them the nature of another uh, instance in order to get them to come out and have this to be a surprise. But uh, first of all, uh, I had a present surprise. I'd like to introduce uh, Staff Sergeant Tony Williams, if you would stand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Staff Sergeant Williams was a is student at Huntington High School, I think when I first got on the commission. And he chose me as a mentor. He's been in the military, what, 10 years now, Tony? Uh, about seven. Seven years. He's staff sergeant. He's just being reassigned from Korea to Fort Drum, New York. And he always come and visit me. And this time he brought a, a guest with him. He have Mrs. Tony Williams, Kim. <laughs> like to recognize them. At this time, I would like to call Mr. Billy Wayne to the podium, please. Mr. Billy Wayne is the president of the West Shreveport Alliance, as well as the president of the Fairway Forest Association. Ms. Clara Farley isn't here today, is she? Here, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. Clara Farley is the president of the West Peak Neighborhood Association. Ms. Helen Mazier, has she made it here? Would you come forward? Ms. Mazier is the epitome of a volunteer within the community. She's a CCA, long-term CCA board member, member of the Greenwood Community Center, and also recently appointed to the Caddo Fire District 3 board. Is Ms. Fields with, here today? Ms. Fields, okay. In the absence of Ms. Fields, Ms. Fields is the director of the Greenwood Community Center. We have Mr. John Stewart. Did you come forward? President of Timberline Homeowners Association. I told Mr. Stewart he's the only man that can outwork me. <laughs> I don't know where he get his energy, but he's a tireless worker, and we appreciate him in the neighborhood. And I couldn't mention him without mentioning his wife, Jean. Wherever you basically see him working, Jean is going to be right there with him. Uh, Madeline Bowie, Western Hills States Neighborhood Association. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brooks, with the president of the Twilight Meadows Association. And Ms. Edna Bowen, we call her the mayor of Western Hills. She ride patrol throughout the neighborhood. She going to make sure your grass cut. If anything going on that's not supposed to be going on, she's going to make sure that everything is right. Uh, she stated that she might be a little late if she was able to make it. And also Ms. Josie Harris of the Western Hills Homeowners Association. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I got you down here, supposedly, uh, uh, with, with other motive, motives, and want to recognize you uh, for your uh, dedication and your service within the community. And if you would like to uh, make a comment, please feel free to do so at this time. And your certificates will be forthcoming. Okay. We start off with Ms. Helen. First, I'd like to say good afternoon. I'm a tad bit hoarse. Um, I've worked with Mr. Ken for a long years now, and I've been excited to work with uh, Head Start, Cattle Community Action Agency, Mr. Uh, Pearson, who is our president over there. We're excited that uh, he d takes his job so seriously. Ms. McCullough works also with us, and we're just excited to be here. Um, Greenwood is doing a lot of things. We're growing. We're getting bigger. We're expanding. Uh, our chief is our fire chief is here in the audience also. So uh, if it's okay, I'd like to recognize oh, he's, him. He's next. He's our new fire chief, and we're excited to have him. Um, it's just everything is just going well in Greenwood, and we're so excited about it. Thank you. What's in your prayers, Wayne? I never pass up an opportunity to get a free microphone. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the West Freeport Alliance, of which I'm the president, is an alliance. It's a, a, a group of organizations from various neighborhood associations. Mr. Stewart is the president of his neighborhood association, but his neighborhood association is a member of the West Freeport Alliance. The alliance is comprised of the executive's president or his or her appointee of ten, ten different neighborhood associations, West Peak, steeplechase, but uh, can't name all. We thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Epperson, for allowing us the opportunity to help ourselves in the community, because by you being there allows us to help the community as well. We're going to have our meeting tonight. It's ironic that we get this award today, and we will pass it on to the other Alliance members tonight, and we do thank you. I appreciate Ken giving the invitation to come down. Uh, he told me that he was going to have something here for the commissioners. Uh, but he did tell me that it wouldn't be anything on property standards because I have sitting on the work session of property standards and I'm eager to wait for something to come out on that. And uh, I'm a strong believer in Honorable Association. Honorable Association, our first step, make our parish as what it should be. And again, I enjoy working with the uh, Homeowners Association, and uh, again, we will seek support and different items. And whenever I have a problem, I always call someone in commission, and I've never been turned down yet. Again, we do appreciate your support. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, communication reports, Mr. Spears. All right. I believe the administration has some presentations. Yes, sir. Sir. President Cox and Commissioners, I'd like at this time to ask Mr. Herbert Pickens and um, Mr. Uh, Benny Parrish to come forward, please. I think it's only fitting that uh, these two gentlemen have served our parish faithfully for the past 25 and 28 years. And they're about to retire. And if I was only fitting to bring them before you today and thank them publicly for all their dedication and hard work that they had uh, given to the city, uh, to the city of Shreveport and to the parish of Caddo over the length of their careers. And certainly, um, job well done. Thank you very much. On last, on last Friday, the, the, the unit gave them plaques and certificates of appreciation for their hard work. Mr. Herbert, would you like to say anything at this time? Yeah, I would just like to thank all the commissioners for, uh, and the staff for your hard work and uh, dedication toward animal and mosquito control. And I want to say it's just been truly a blessing to have been here 25 years to work for the parish. And I can say it hadn't all been good, but God is in charge. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. I say thank you. It's been a little over 20, it's about almost 30 years, because I started back in 1976, you know, 75 when I first started to work there. But it was, it was, it was been nice, though, but I'm glad to be gone because I'm tired. I, <laughs> <laughs> I had it no more, you know, so I'm just glad, you know. And Brother Ken, I know he, you know, was challenged with us when he first came to commission. I took him out with a lady one time, and she went on one side and down the other side, and she didn't know he was a commissioner, but he was there to look and see what we had to go through out there, and I'm glad it's over with now, though. <laughs> <laughs> y'all would, y'all got some commissioners would like to say a few words. Uh, y'all just hang around up front, Ms. Lane. Yes, yeah, get, up, get up to the podium before we get your what? dead center to sight. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly, I just wanted to, uh, to, to, to extend my congratulations to anybody that has worked as many years as I am old, y'all know I'm not much older than 25. <laughs> okay. But, uh... Lord help. <laughs> <laughs> like Mr. Epperson telling us lies. I want to go. Don't strike a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Under oath. I just want to let you know. <laughs> get much older. Uh, but okay. certainly, I, I hope you all really, really enjoy your retirement. Uh, I still need your number because I know you know a whole lot about cats and dogs, so... Uh, 
I will still be trying to call you every now and then, but thank you all and congratulations to you and congratulations to your family. I know your spouses are probably wondering what in the world y'all going to do. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> find something else to do. Find Absolutely. something else to do. I will have another pass on it. Don't keep me busy. Oh, okay, okay, good. Congratulations again. I, I have Mr. Epperson to you. Yeah, but been there. I, I remember that <laughs> riding on the back of that truck. We went to that house over in, uh, what was it, Holland, I believe, mm -hmm. the first yeah, house. Yeah, it was. In the old place on King's Highway. And But I, you know, really admire what you all have done. And uh, everybody said it hadn't been all good. All I know, uh, I mean, it hadn't been all good, but all I know is good that I've heard from you. Anytime we've ever called, never got any complaints from the citizens about you or uh, Anything that you was asked to do, you carried it out. You were knowledgeable of your job. Remember the time we had the squirrel in the refrigerator and somebody went out there and shot the squirrel in the lady's <laughs> house. So we, we've had some, some, some fun times. But, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, but it wasn't Herbert now. <laughs> Herbert wanted to run him off. <laughs> but we had, did, I think we had snakes in the washing machine, possums in a wall. So we, we appreciate all y'all did. And, and District 6 had the most requests of animal and mosquitoes and rodent control of any district. So, Mr. Brown, get ready. That's why he moved it. <laughs> <laughs> moved it 12. Well, we thank you all. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> all right, thank you. And we appreciate what you all did. Anyway, you know, like I said, when you're dealing with the public, different attitude and different people. Yeah. <laughs> You had some bad times. Didn't yeah, you? but we appreciate both y'all and uh, congratulations and thank you. All. Happy retirement. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. President. Uh, yes. President Coffs, I have a couple of items that uh, need to share with you. Uh, I did give each commissioner a copy of a, a process change request I'm making to the commission body, and the way we deal with capital outlay requests. I think any. Uh, <clears throat> Any request that comes to us that has nothing to do directly with the parish commission should come before you all, <clears throat> and either you all pass a resolution of support uh, of some type to give us directions on how we should proceed. And uh, you do have a copy of that before you that I recommend that we look at that process and change it. And also, uh, I give you all a copy of a staff, of a staff directive that we issued this week to the staff advising them to any request for capital outlay projects, requests that go out, must be signed by the administrator and uh, go through the normal process of, of keeping track of what goes out. So those two things, I think, would enhance what we do in terms of capital outlay requests and also give the opportunity for folks that are not part of the Parish Commission to come before you and state their case. The next thing that I gave you is a copy of the... Uh, we met this Monday with the City Council Public Safety Committee and they are requesting that we enhance the security in this facility. And Chief Whitehorn gave a presentation Monday, and they're recommending in a staff summary that I gave you a copy of, level three uh, security measures be put in place for this building. And it does have an associated cost with it of $212,000. But be, being that we do cost share the maintenance and operations for this building, it will only be $57,000 for the initial cost and $27,000 per year. So I'm requesting that you read the information that I gave you today. And on the 5th of May at the work session, we invited uh, Sheriff Prater and Chief Whitehorn to come before you to kind of clarify any questions you may have with respect to the security initiative for this building. Okay. <clears throat> also, the last thing I have is I provided you all a an update listing of all the precincts throughout the parish and provided Commissioner Brown a copy of the maps that he requested at the last uh, meeting we had. If there's any additional question with respect to precincts and numbers and changes, I appreciate you letting me know and we'll get you the information. Um, that concludes my report, uh, President Cox. Okay. Uh, Suspended rules and allow visitors to address the commission. I don't have any cards. So, uh, he, he should be next. We have an introduction. Actually, yeah. Well, Commissioner Efforts. Under communication reports, did. Okay, Mr. Spears, do we have an introduction? Uh, an introduction? Uh, well, actually, you passed something on the agenda. I think Mr. Epperson had wanted to introduce me. Uh, 
fire chief. We had, from, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's oh, what we're okay. talking about. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, when the uh, administration said they were through, I thought they were skipping that, so I didn't know. Well, we'll go back. For oh, the fire chief? Yes. Uh, the fire chief, oh. he's here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Did you forget that? Yeah, you or is that just no. oh, Mr. Yep, Spears is going to read it out to his... Uh, okay. He's reading. All right, well, let's go ahead with that with the introduction. Uh, Chief Mitchell, would you come forward, please, sir? Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Epperson, for inviting me and the commission for allowing me to introduce myself. Ernest Mitchell, the newly elected fire chief of Cattle Fire District 3 in Greenwood. I had a 45-minute presentation, but unfortunately, I don't think I brought it with me. <laughs> you did real good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As most of you are well aware, my fire department has had some negative media attention in the last year, and I, I fully believe, given the, the uh, personnel that I've been fortunate enough to work with for the last two months as our fire department, we can change that. Just give us that opportunity. Thank you again for inviting me today. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ready, sir? Now we suspend the rules, but I don't have any cars, Mr. Uh, Spears. We don't so. suspend the rules. Public hearing. Go move on to public hearing and zoning okay, cases, great. Mr. Spears. The thing that I wanted to say also, I'm on the request board. Um, no, wanted you're, to you're not, but go ahead. Oh. You're not, but go ahead. You're not, oh, excuse me. I wanted to commend and recognize Matt Pepper for hitting the ground running this past Saturday, he was at Robinson Rescue on the corner of Kings Highway in Beverly, building relationships with them and painting the inside of their building on his day off work. Thank you for, for taking care of that. Now I, <laughs> now I have Mr. Jenkins up on the board. Yeah, uh, I wanted to make an information request, Mr. President, of our uh, administration. I know that we are going to, uh, later on on the agenda, we are going to be uh, uh, considering uh, some ordinances for mineral leases. Can, can you hear me, Mr. Wilson? Yes, yes, sir. I'm sorry. I know sometimes I kind of talk away from this mic. Uh, I, I would like to see some numbers on what we're getting on these mineral leases. Uh, maybe some past performance numbers on on what we're doing on the mineral lease. I'm, I'm not trying to disrupt anything that's already on the table. I just like to see how that's been performing in the past. Secondly, I thought that the commissioners were supposed to take a group picture here today at 3:15. What happened? Uh, y y yes, sir. But uh, not all the commissioners were present at that time. I hadn't made it yet. Uh, so. <laughs> Okay. Commissioner Jenkins, that's correct, sir. We'd like for you to if it'd be okay to, after the meeting is over for the group photos to take place. We need that. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to wear my nice suit again. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll yeah. make sure we get you before you leave today, sir. Okay. Right after the meeting ends, we would like to take the group photo of the commissioners. Did you have something to say about the mineral leases? No, I, I, I was outside. I was on the phone. I'm yes. sorry. I didn't. That's your nice suit, Sam? What? Yeah. My nice suit. We'll call you. Just like silk. You're not Mr. Jenkins, uh, uh, Mr. Glass will have his hearing aid on next next week. Okay. But uh, I understand you want the numbers of how things were coming in revenue-wise? Right, off the mineral leases. I'd like to see some okay. past performance on what we're getting on okay. some past We can provide that for you, sir. Okay. Talk about, like, production-wise. Uh, I mean, I can give you the lease information as well as uh, royalties that we. Yeah, I'd like to get yeah. the the royalties. That's what I'm trying to find out. You know, what what are we getting per acre, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I just like to try to see what the past performance is on. Okay, we'll provide it for you, sir. Then, then finally, uh, uh, Mr. President, I, I'm going to read this this handout that was given to uh, to me concerning the uh, security. Uh, but I was just wondering, I, I don't know if you're in a position to, to tell me this right now or not. Mm -hmm. Why level three security? Why is that being recommended over level uh, two? I think uh, this was based on, on a situation that occurred in Missouri where the individual came in and shot the, the mayor and the two council members. Hmm. And Mayor Glover had asked of the Public, public Safety Committee of the, of the Shreveport uh, government to study that issue. 
and Chief Whitehorn, Chief uh, I mean, Shelf Prater, and uh, some others of the task force got together and they looked at various levels and they recommended level three because that would be the most uh, enhanced version of security upgrade for this building. However, it's up to this body to vote up or down one way or the other from level one to level three. But I think at the same time, if, if you pick level one or two and something happens that could have been prevented in level three, then it would be on this body that we have chose a lesser degree of security as opposed to the most enhanced version of security. So on the surface of things, uh, I, I would think that they're going for the most enhanced version of security. That's why they're recommending three. Uh, so so am, I, am I to assume that the, uh, the city, both the city council and the parish commission are going to have to agree on uh, what we need to agree on the level of security? Yes, sir. And if there's a disagreement, then what? Um, I think we need to work, we will be able to work it out because the, the, the public safety committee recommended that we go forward with a joint resolution that the city council and parish commission could live with. One of those versions of the security enhancement uh, to see whatever one we want to use. And I would imagine if the city chooses one and we choose two, then we probably will settle, I mean, settle on two, which will be a medium. But just be mindful if some measure in security level three is violated because we didn't choose that option, then we will have to deal with that publicly later on as why we didn't implement what was being recommended by the law enforcement community as the most optimum uh, level to use. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, I have Mr. Escadet, Mr. Epperson, and Ms. Lynch. Mr. Escadet. Did, did I just hear you tell us twice that basically you've got the results of a study that none of us asked for and that if we fail to take basically the will of those who created the study, that we could be held liable down the road if, if we didn't do everything possible? Well. And that's how I took it. Okay. That's how I heard it. Okay. I, I'm, just, I'm just conveying the sentiments of the Public Safety, public safety uh, Committee that met. would have been, the, excuse me, the recommendation okay. as it was. I think you injected basically a veiled threat to us that mm -hmm. If something happens anytime, anywhere in this chamber, and we don't go to level three, that we could be held liable. That's that's what I heard. Okay, I, I'm not saying that you could be held liable, but I'm saying that. What if, did you if, say? Well, if if there was an assessment made on this facility by the law enforcement community, and who requested that, other than the mayor, who who here requested that? No one in this council requested it. Oh, so we're being drug along on this now? No. Guilty they, by association? Well, they were asking us to consider it under a joint resolution whether or not. We can say no. We, we have went to the city before Commissioner Escadade and, and requested security and under the former administration they said they didn't want any so we didn't get any. So it's a matter I, of, know, of what I this body wants to that, do. And, and I appreciate that and I think it'd be a little different had this body requested that uh -huh. or, 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 or signed off that yes we need to do this study and then if we fail to act but you know basically you're pinning someone's actions around you know the necks of the 12 of us that's wrong that's just plain wrong okay now, i'm not sure whether something does or does not need to be done and it'll yeah. certainly have to be a joint effort with the city because we share this building right but the way this was done and now the way it's being presented you know it you know it's just like kissing the bride and then asking after the fact if it's okay to kiss her okay you know, so I don't like I don't like just the tone of this thing, and I don't like to feel threatened. If we determine okay. a lesser level than what the mayor thinks he needs is satisfactory, and something happens years down the road, that's just not right. I mean, okay. and how special are we here? We should be any more vulnerable than someone shopping at Walmart getting attacked in the parking lot. You know, in fact, if people have a gripe, you know, that they ought to be able to come and have a gripe. Right. Just passed a resolution last week making parish government accessible to people who have language disabilities. Well, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to put up a wall. In, in one sense, we want it accessible, but then you're going to have to run through ten levels of dog and pony show just to get into the building that they paid for. Right. Right. And of course, I'll give you. You know, while well, since Mr. Jenkins brought it up, you know, you give authorities, policing authorities, any more authority, they use that authority. So, you know, I just don't want to be frisked and patted down and eyeballed every time I enter this building. I pay taxes just like everybody else, everybody else in this parish. So, well, what do we really want here? And if the mayor has a problem, he needs to hire a security guard. So, 
I'm not saying we need to do something, but I certainly don't want to approach it under the threat that if we don't do what was recommended, then, then, and if something happens that we can't control, that, that we're going to be responsible. That's just not right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Everson. Mm -hmm. That was basically uh, my concern. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any commissioners at the table in this committee, did we? Uh, no, sir. The, the, the Public Safety Committee of the Shreveport City Council meets every month, and they look right. at public safety issues within the city proper. Right, I understand And, and there were that. requests okay. made by the mayor to have them take a look at this council to see if we can enhance the security of this uh, chamber as well as the facility. And that's what came out of it. Right, okay. The only person from the parish commission invited was the administration. We, we attended one meeting, and then the subsequent meeting we attended Monday as to look at the results of what the task force came up with. And, and I believe they have Box Hill Air Force Base that come out and take a look at it from their security preview. Uh, the sheriff department, and along with the city, the police department looked at it as to what ought to be done in this facility with respect to protecting those that come in as well as the facility structure itself. But no commissioners were present in that meeting? Uh, no, sir. Uh, who crunched the numbers? Uh, it was done by the task force, uh, the sheriff department, representative in the, in the city of Shreveport, um, fire department, as well as police department. Thank you, sir. Ms. Lynch. Gosh, at the risk of agreeing with John Escaday 100%, I agree um, with, with uh, I guess, the majority of, of the concerns that he expressed. I guess my question is, the different levels, who determine what is level, I guess, what level one, level two, what degree of what went into this? How were the levels determined? Do you know? Uh, no, ma'am, I didn't. I wasn't a part of that. Matter of fact, uh, the city uh, public safety committee had put together the task force to look at it, and we were not invited to be a part of that, uh, but we were told that it was going to be taking place. So they were the leaders on this initiative. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, because I, I, I'm not through going through the whole thing, but there are some mm -hmm. in two, and then there are some in three. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm looking at maybe a combination of two and three. I mean, I don't yes. necessarily agree with everything that they have in three mm -hmm. or necessarily everything that they have in two. Mm -hmm. So I guess I have some concerns about you don't do all of these that are in three. Okay. Then, you know, can there be a combination or is there going to be discussion right. about maybe buying some of even one, two, and three and coming up something because... I mean, you know, your comments about the level three, but actually there's probably a level four, five, or six that could be done. Right. Um, now, Commissioner Lynch, um, and, I, and, I, I, I agree. Hold on, and let me say that even if we adopt level three, mm -hmm. that's not going to keep you from being sued. And it's, it's, not going, it, 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 it's not a guarantee that you won't be sued, and it's not a guarantee that there may be something even above level three that can be done. So that's not really an issue or consideration. Mm -hmm. um, that this body should be, I guess, burdened with mm -hmm. uh, as far as choosing one over the other. Right. Okay. So I just wanted to to, to make those comments. Um, you know, this is a public building paid for with public funds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, while we've not experienced some of the issues that they've had in other cities, because we have great public servants, <laughs> but... You know, if we're going to do all this, then we need to be in a outfit of suburban, too. Okay? I mean, so, I mean, just to, to the degree that you can go with this, mm -hmm. if we're, are we trying to protect us? Are we trying to protect the citizens? Just who, who are we trying to protect? Okay. As I, as I can appreciate it, it's a combination of both. Okay. And um, the last paragraph in that letter, uh, my uh, memo to you is that the, uh, Chef Prater and Chief Whitehorn would be here on the 5th to answer a lot of these questions because they were the ones that helped formulate the plan and the levels of the security initiatives. And I guess they could be in a better position to answer the what if scenario questions that you were asking me. Well, I do have a concern about the committee having council members on it and there were no commission representatives. Okay. Understand. Thank you. This is, this is one thing in closing. This, this committee 
is a subcommittee of the, the city council. council. Right, I understand. But they had representatives there from their body that were, yeah. you know, interested in and aware of, I guess, real or perceived security issues. Right. And the commissioners were not present to, I guess, give input about what, whatever security issues or concerns that we may have. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. I have Ms. McCullough and then Mr. Pearson. Ms. McCullough. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I do agree that safety is a very important issue, but I'm just reminded of, you know, some past issues that have occurred that somewhat uh, had to do with intergovernmental relations or agreement. And, um, uh, for instance, uh, and really what I'm trying to do is piggyback on, the, uh, on Mr. Escaday. Uh, we have, I know personally in regards to my district, I have asked certain things of the city and the message that was sent back to me is that you don't tell us what to do. And Escaday, I can truly identify with where you're coming from today. I think really from, uh, we should from this point <coughs> clarify the roles of the different levels of government. You know, because if we don't tell the city what to do, I know that city lies within the the parish, the parish lies within the state, and I think there needs to be some clarity as far as the roles, what the real roles are of these different levels of government. Mm -hmm. And uh, Commissioner Escaday, you know, I know you're hyperactive, and sometimes when you get ready to talk, I said, oh my God, here he goes. <laughs> but I want you to know today that I'm with you on that today. I mean, and I haven't forgotten that the message that was related to me, especially, and I hate to keep bringing up about the 15-year leases, but when we were requesting the moratorium from the city, you know, it was as if, though, um, I was actually telling the city what to do, and really I was crying out for help for my district. And it was related to me that, you know, in regards from the members of the city council, and I won't call any names, you don't tell us what to do. And I feel the same way about this issue. I think we should have been involved. Thank you. Mr. Pearson, then Ms. Lynch. It seems to me about two years ago, or a little less than two years ago, we were concerned about safety. Maybe a little more. I, I, it looked like it was around two years. Mm -hmm. And that we had gone to, to the mayor at that time. Maybe a little more. And requested that, that we look into getting some security for this building. I mean, for this at least for this period during the commission meeting. And for whatever reason, we seem to have turned that all over because it appears to have been the city's idea. And we're getting to a point, of us and them, where, you know, you can't tell me what to do. Well, if that's the case, why didn't we go forward? and develop some type of security. We just, you know, decided at that point that if it wasn't an issue for them, then, then we wouldn't take issue with that. That's a commission decided that. This commission decided that. I mean, I, I don't see us raising sand about going over to the courthouse and being patted down and, you know, uh, while I'm I'm leery about some of the suggestions in the document, I don't I don't want to get well, see us get to a point where we get upset about who made the suggestion. Now, that doesn't make good sense to me. I mean, if it was a good suggestion, it was a good suggestion. I mean, let's just take a look at it and see what what part of that will work for us. And if two works for us, if one and a half works for us, if three works for us, if nothing works for us, let's just make that decision and move on. I just don't, I just, I have, I have real difficulty when we get to us and them. Because we have, we have this that we need to have for the people we serve, and a lot of those people are the same people <coughs> that uh, uh, the council serves. And so I, I just think we need to, if we want to ingest take a look at it and read it over and digest it and come back with some recommendations either from the administration or from this body and let's do that make a decision and move on thank you mr. president thank you sir ms. Lynch let me um, 
I had a question, but I, I guess I didn't hear the same thing that you heard, Commissioner Pearson, because I don't think the issue was whether, uh, as you said, we've had cons security concerns in the past, and I don't think the issue is whose idea it was or who brought it forth. I think what he said was the manner in which it was done that I think he was taking issue with. Uh, the question I had was, and you brought up the courthouse, are we going to be looking at additional security measures at other parish-owned buildings, such as the courthouse? I mean, you probably have more. Well, I mean, I know they go through the all of that, but <coughs> once you're in, of course, it's full of cops and stuff. But <laughs> I mean, the, the, the only reason why we just, the only reason why we're discussing this is because we jointly own this building. Okay. All the other proper security measures are already in place at our parish-owned facilities. Okay. Because we jointly own this building, okay. the city raised the issue about the level of security. We had four years ago, uh, the parish had raised the level of security because we wanted to include this building with the courthouse. Okay. And we went to that time Mayor Hightower, and he told us he was not interested in security, so if we wanted it, to go over to CCC, the exact words he said. Right. And I we mean, backed off. And we took it, and we just kind of walked away from it. Now the city, years later, had raised the issue with respect to the incident that occurred in Missouri, and then they were reengaged again. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me ask you this: uh, additional operating cost that's going to be coming out of the general yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Uh, it's going to be coming out of the the fund budget for this for the courthouse budget, because this building. This building, the courthouse, and the building come out of the, the building maintenance fund. We have a building maintenance fund where all the costs for the buildings at the parish own. Uh, those costs are coming out of that fund. Not okay, the so the initial cost <clears throat> plus the operational cost. Now, the initial there? cost uh, we would have to determine as uh, far as because uh, usually that fund can't um, sustain uh, capital purchases. Okay. Uh, we usually fund those through uh, either the bond money or the uh, riverboat money. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Mr. Escadet. I just want to clarify that my um, question to this is not whether or not we need to do something. Uh, I don't know. That's yet undetermined. My only comments were basically at the way the information was presented. Mm -hmm. And instead of it being presented to us that there's a report for your consideration, it was presented with basically how I interpret it, uh, an over laid threat or in, in, in an intimidating fashion that if you do not go with level three. So I think basically, probably in error, Mr. Wilson implemented his opinion or his personal feelings into it, which he shouldn't have done. You know, that's my problem. Just as when Mr. Grubb is here, and I will absolve Ms. Frazier because she doesn't, didn't do this, but anytime we get into this legal ground, we get more than just the legal facts. You know, we get personal opinion thrown into it, and it's human nature. Uh, when Rub has been here before when he's said the course of what you do could uh, result in legal action against the parish. We don't, well, well, quite honestly, I don't know about the rest of you. I don't need anybody to hold my hand. I'm a grown man, and I got on the ballot, and I ran. And I'm competent and able to take this information and represent the people of my district with it. I don't need to be threatened, and I don't need all the legal stuff. If the legal stuff gets there, that's why we have the parish attorney's office. And I don't know why we're any different than the state legislature or the United States Congress. And I've watched them in their meetings and their debates and on their agenda, and there's not a group of attorneys sitting there, aides, telling them, you can't do this, you can't do that, be careful about that. And I really personally want that to stop. I just want the facts. I'm a big boy. I can look at it and make up my mind. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Uh, amen, Rose. Amen. One quick comment from the chair is that over the last year, we have made some, uh, some strides with each governing body of Shreveport and Cattle Parish working together. And I feel that if we can uh, work on this project together as a whole, uh, we can come to a common ground. So I would ask that the uh, representatives from the city uh, who are on that task force or a part of that task force just get with us and and work with us and i think that we can uh, actually bring this to a head so anything else mr from the administration to the, to the intergovernmental committee probably where it needs to go and that uh, suggestion was just brought to me to bring it to the uh joint city 
planning. So intergovernment intergovernment pl uh, committee intergovernment committee. Yeah. So we'll we'll work through it. And uh, but security is something that we all have to think about, in my opinion. So anyway, anything else as far as that goes? I see Mr. Everson. Not on that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Change subjects. Just chewing that gum real fast. We, you better come on. We ain't even went to the first public hearing yet, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, please, if I might, for the record, I forgot our Deer Creek uh, Homeowners Association, Ms. Sarah Terrell. I'd like to include them in the official minutes of this meeting, too. <laughs> Elections coming up in two years. <laughs> Three. Three, I'm sorry. <laughs> Never stop running, baby. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Public hearing and zoning case. Mr. Spears. Yes, sir. You have zoning case P44. It's ordinance 4760. Lamar Velton Reed and Susan Campbell Reed are the applicants requesting to rezone property northeast side of Louisiana Highway 1 uh, or to RAE for a feed store, petting zoo, and related accessory uses. Retail. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this? Is there anyone here to speak on against this? Next, Mr. Spears. Okay, that all of the zoning cases. Next, we have public hearing on regular your regular ordinances, starting with your local assessment ordinances. Ordinance 41 reinscribes liens for winding way in Loblolly Lane. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this? Anyone here to speak against this? Next, Mr. Spears. Local Assessment Ordinance 42 reinscribed liens uh, for Rust Lane. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this? Is there anyone here to speak against this? Mr. Spears? Yes, sir. These are related to the 6040 paving program, by the way. This local Assessment Ordinance 43 reinscribed liens for Daring Road. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this? Anyone here to speak against this? Mr. Local Assessment Ordinance 44 reinscribed liens for Sundown Drive. Anyone here to speak against this? Anyone here to speak for this? Mr. Spears. Ordinance 4745 amends your code of ordinances relative to the discharge of firearms. Is anyone here in here to speak against this? Anyone here to speak for this? Mr. Spears. Ordinance 4761 authorizes the administrator to lease certain property owned by the parish, corner of Burt Coons and GM Boulevard. Anyone here to speak for this? Anyone here to speak against this? Mr. Spears. Ordinance 4762 declares certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorizes the sale of the tax interest therein. Is there anyone here to speak for this? Is there anyone here to speak against this? Mr. Spears. Next, we go back to the zoning ordinance that we had public hearing on. This is for final passage, zoning case P44. Uh, Authorized feed store, petting zoo, and related accessory uses. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner today, second by Commissioner Pearson. Any questions? If not, please vote. And it passes. Mr. Spears. Next are your uh, regular ordinances for final passage, beginning with the... I recognize, the chair recognizes Commissioner Escadade. This time I would like to make a motion to for the englobo passage of ordinances 41 through 44, 47, 45, 47, 61, and 47, 62. Second. We have a motion on the floor from 41 to uh, 47, 62 to englobo. I have Ms. Lynch. Oh, I had a question about the reinscribed liens uh, that are up for final passage. One. Well, it's, it's a question. I'm just taking one as an example. Uh, for one. Are these, um, I get, I mean, are we just continuing to do these from year to year? Are we getting any money um, in from? Commissioner, sure, yes. Uh, these are ones that uh, we may not be receiving funds on, but we do receive uh, funds uh, each year. We set up payment plans. You either have, you either have a five-year plan or a ten-year plan, and these are ones that did not pay their balances off within the ten-year period. And every ten years, we have to reinscribe the lien in order to keep the lien on the property. Okay. Do we continue to work with them? Yes, we work with them. We set up if they need additional time or additional payment arrangements. Uh, we work with them to uh, to schedule that. 
Um, we also work with them on um, trying to get the interest amount because interest builds on these while they're not paying. But we also work with them to try to get the interest down. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can I show no other commissioners on the board. We have a uh, motion on the floor to englobo 41 through uh, 4762. Am I correct? And it had a second. Any other questions? If not, please vote. And that passes. Next, Mr. Spears. Turn your. For introduction by title. Yes, sir. Ordinance 4763 uh, consolidates precinct number 140 and re precinct number 141 into precinct number 140. Consolidates precincts 147 and 149 into new precinct 149. Then ordinance 4764 amends your code of ordinances regarding justices of the peace and constables. Ordinance 4765 amends your code of ordinances to prohibit commercial solicitation on residential property unless invited. Ordinance 4766 declares certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorizes the sale of the tax interest therein. Work session minutes from April. Work session minutes from April 14th. Move to approve. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Escudero, second by Commissioner McCulley. Any questions on this? If not, please vote. Mr. Allen and Mr. Pearson. Oh. Oh. And that is Mr. Spears. Resolution: Release of certain mineral interests at the request of Classic Petroleum. Moved. Been moved by Commissioner Escadade, second by the chair. Any questions? If not, please vote. That passes. Mr. Spears. Resolution 13 recognizes and adopts the fair market rents established by HUD for the Section 8 housing program. Been moved by Commissioner Lynch, second by Commissioner Smith. Any questions? If not, please vote. That passes, Mr. Spears. Resolution number 14 authorizes the request of a special acceptance second. merger precinct. Been moved by Commissioner McCullough, second by Commissioner Dominic. Any questions? If not, please vote. Mr. Tebow, you didn't register. You didn't register. And no. <laughs> yes, sir. Resolution 15 authorizes the administrator to uh, lease of certain mineral interests owned by the parish at the request of tar and exploration. So moved. moved. Been moved by Commissioner Escadate, second by Commissioner Thibodeau. Any questions? If not, please vote. Yes. I heard both oh. of you say you moved, so I just gave one of you. It was Dominic. Oh, it was? Thibodeau, see it. Uh, said I made the motion. He made even it. Hey, yeah. <laughs> We're even up. Hey, you look like each other on the side, you know. <laughs> All right, old business, Mr. Spears, and that does pass. And on the agenda, sir. New business, sir. Uh, the appointment of three people to the Black Bow Watershed District. I'm, I move that uh, we um, actually uh, confirm and ratify the appointments that were made by the Black Bayou Watershed okay. District, which are David Hale. Elmer E. Morrow and Gary Wolf. Okay, we have a motion that's been uh, moved and seconded. Any questions? If not, please vote. Hold on, the system's thinking. <clears throat> that's effective immediately. Okay. Yes. That's correct. Effective immediately. Mr. Brown. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And that passed. Sir, uh, I'm going to fire uh, Cattle Parish Waterworks District Number One. Most of y'all, I'm going to make a motion that we uh, appoint John Sorter to fill the uh, term for Todd. I moved outside the district. I appreciate your work, Todd, but uh, making a motion John Sorter be appointed. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Dominic, second by Commissioner Jenkins. Any questions? <laughs> if not. Yeah, somebody second. I'm sorry, Mr. Somebody Epperson. Second. I don't understand. 
understand. I got to go back to work. <laughs> I got to go too. And that passes. Have a quick picture after the uh, meeting, so and I do mean quick. Any other business? If not, move it on. If you're blocking anybody. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Rose. Because it stays out of it.